Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. Paris Rapeseed. There are at this time two key patterns here. A first and larger one is the February 2021 to July 22 ascending broadening wedge pattern currently 789 to well up off the top of my daily chart far enough that it becomes a material. The lower trend line for this is highlighted in the upper part of my daily chart in dark blue. This was not a perfect pattern but it has been the main market driver here higher in the early part of 2022. The break lower in July last year left the following incredible targets on the downside. The primary target X is in the 352 even area with a harder to reach secondary target X1 in the 217 even area. These are obviously, well, pretty much way out there targets that you can put into your diary on the back page and just look at maybe once a year. A newer, smaller pattern though, it is still quite big on this daily chart, is the early July to date bearish Andrews pitchfork. The market is at the moment in between the middle time below, currently at 512, and the upper time above, currently at 583. You can see the times highlighted in purple on my daily chart. I thought when I drew this one that it might eventually need finessing or even turning into a shallower bearish shift pitchfork, both of which I'd happy to be happy to do in a heartbeat. Well, so far it has not needed any surgery and is still excellent in showing the bearish angle of attack of the market since late October 2022. Finally, there is again the elephant in the room to address, which may be becoming the beginning of a herd of elephants. You see, we had a monthly key reversal down in November and whatever you do, make sure that you take that into your calculations. I've always said that. Or thoughts. Now, there had been a weekly key reversal up in mid-December and we had seen a follow through higher for the following two weeks after, but prices ran out of steam on their approach to the upper time in early January and we've turned lower since, such that we are on the verge of also making January a monthly key reversal. So if we close next Tuesday either over 601 or under 588, then we'd be on. Right now we are so very much looking at a monthly key reversal down here. Thus we come to this week's action, the apparent stalling of the decline. This is also due to two reasons, both reasonable. The first is I suspect the stronger one, and that is easily labelled congestion from all the way back in September 2012, between 5.13 and three quarters and 5.19 and a half. Second is the market approaching the more recent middle time of the previously mentioned bearish Andrews pitchfork in purple. This middle time will pass through the congestion by the end of this week and it will be interesting to see if the congestion will be such good support if it is tested from next week onwards on its own. Winnipeg Canola. During most of October last year, the 50% Fibonacci line of the October 2020 to April 22 move at 863.80 had been acting as a support. Then it became resistance in mid-December then again as support as we turned into the new year until the second week of january where it gave way and it's now again resistance this final move was i suspect related to the final impact of the monthly key reversal down we saw in november now if i take you back to late summer last year i had the follow i said the following and i quote it became evident since the start of the sideways to slightly lo lower movement we've seen here since june that there was a shallow bear channel currently 881.20 to 765.30 and is this that had been driving the market lower during the summer end of quote now to emphasize this point i added and i again quote so it seems that until the slightly bearish channel breaks or morphs into another pattern it will continue to show the slightly bearish angle of attack of this market end of quote well as you can see that bear channel is still there and it is still leading the way lower in that time, it had been breached on both sides, most recently in early November, but it still remains valid and it's highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart. Now, in addition to the monthly key reversal, finally kicking in during this year, we had a, uh, during in this year, past year, we had another feature that was 
has impinged upon the market. It is a June 2020 to date uptrend currently at 8.15.40, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. The market came close to testing this back in early September and then again in late November, and it finally punched down through the uptrend this week after closing right on it last Friday. Last week I said, and I quote, it is worth keeping a close eye on this as it could turn this previous bear channel into a sideways triangle with all the implications that may have, end of quote. Well, this idea of changing into a sideways triangle looks on the surface dead. But I'd ask you to consider this. Perhaps, just perhaps, we have had a break lower below this to be honest, loosely constructed sideways triangle. Thus, it is worth for a little while time, or a little time at least, to place some potential targets for this pattern below. Hence, a primary target X would be in the 768 and a half area, with a secondary harder to reach target X1 in the 688 even area, which is below the bottom of my daily chart. Additionally, I would also like you to consider this thought from my commentary some five weeks ago, and I quote, there is just the thought of what may be the whole April today action. It can be seen as a bottoming action. You see, it can also be seen just as it is a shallow bear channel, or you might look at it as part of a very large bearish halfway hesitation. It is all still too early on these thoughts, but I need, I think they need to be present when things start to happen eventually, end of quote. I would add one final item that may or may not come about. It is to look closely at the movements of the short medium moving average, currently 847.20, and the medium moving average, currently 847.90. There is a distinct possibility here of a dead cross that may have already perhaps done so, but I cannot see it clearly yet. And that's something I want to look at next week. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. Over September and mid-October, the market formed a small but effective reverse head and shoulder pattern, which I'd highlighted on my daily chart. It was the break higher over the neckline, which is highlighted in dark blue on my chart, combined with the break higher over the old neckline of the September 2015 to November 2017 head and shoulders top, currently at 39.14, which was highlighted in bright red, and finally the break above the short medium moving average, currently 39.78, that all together, all together, caused the move up in early November. It gave potential targets on the upside of a primary target in the 4245 area and a secondary harder to reach target X1 in the 4440 area. In late October, prices reached the primary target. And we've come close to target X1 as recently as early January, but we've not managed to get there so far. Now, I thought about retiring target X1 last time, but cautious as I am, I've kept it on and I will again for a little while longer. You see, every time we've seen an attempt higher, we've also seen the market drop back to the seeming security of the combined support of the old neckline, the short medium moving average, and the medium moving average. And that's currently the medium moving average currently at 39.08. More on these moving averages shortly, shortly as I wish to expand on a new pattern I discussed five weeks ago. In the meantime, I had also drawn a mid-August to early November 2022 mildly bearish shift pitchfork which is highlighted in green on my daily chart. The market is currently in between the middle time below, uh, which is currently 36.75, and the upper time above, currently 43.11. And we've seen prices gently heading lower between these two times since the pitchfork was created back in November last year. This pattern seemed to be doing the running of this market at, that, at this time. Now, before we start, stop looking at anything else and concentrate on this pattern, there is something else I would like to discuss and ask you to look out for. It relates to my earlier comments on the moving averages. You see, we have a bow tie formation of the short moving average, currently 39.44, short medium moving average, currently 39.78, and the medium moving average, currently 38.96. This pattern was created on about the 21st of December last year. And the theory goes that between 15 to 20 trading sessions after creation, we may see the start of a move directly related to this bow tie formation. Now, we have an issue as Christmas and New Year are, are in there as well, affecting the count. But ideally, 
we should have seen a manifestation last week we should have seen a manifestation of the next move and this brings me to what happened over last weekend when we had a gap lower it's not a very big one 3860 to 3853 but it is a gap lower and we have consequently i i suspect because of the bow tie formation had a resultant move lower below all the moving averages the neckline and we have these past two sessions approached the middle time thus i would pay a special care to what is going on around the middle time as we are close to it as well as not being too far away from the low of december last year at 3690 listen to this 3690 and if that low is pierced before the end of this month on tuesday next week which is not that far away and not that much of a move then a whole load of implications of possibilities open up because we would then have the setup for a possible monthly key reversal and that could be quite quite interesting to see and witness the outcome thank you for listening this weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.